Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question asks if I can analyze the mental health and personality factors that may be at work in the life and death of Natalie Wood. Natalie Wood is an actress who was known for movies like West Side Story and Splendor in the Grass. Just a reminder, I'm not diagnosing anybody in this video, only speculating about what could be happening in a situation like this. If you enjoy this video, please like it, subscribe to my channel, and consider supporting me on Patreon. I'll put the link to Patreon in the description for this video. So here I'll be looking at the background of Natalie Wood. I'll talk about the mental health and personality factors, and then I'll look at the circumstances surrounding her death and talk about what I think might have happened there. So starting with the background, Natalie Wood was born Natalia Sakarenko in San Francisco, California on July 20, 1938. Her parents, Nikolai and Maria, were both Russian immigrants. Shortly after her birth, the family moved to Santa Rosa and then later to Los Angeles so that Natalie could pursue a career as an actress. This was after she appeared in the movie Happy Land for just 15 seconds, but it was long enough to attract the attention of the director who kept Natalie in mind for future roles. Natalie's father opposed the move to Los Angeles, but her mother's will was strong. Her mother had a powerful desire for Natalie to be a star. It would be the executives at RKO Radio Pictures who advised Natalie's mother to change Natalie's name to Natalie Wood. Natalie was in the movie Tomorrow is Forever in 1946 and would land her first major role in the 1947 movie Miracle on 34th Street. Natalie was in many films over the next several years. Just as a child actress, she would appear in over 20 movies. In 1953, she was in a television series called The Pride of the Family. At age 16, she started smoking, and she would not quit until she was 40 years old. She co-starred with James Dean in the 1955 movie Rebel Without a Cause, and she appeared in John Ford's The Searchers in 1956. In the same year, she briefly entered into a relationship with Elvis Presley, but she would marry Robert Wagner in 1957. That was for the first time. Natalie's career continued to excel. She was in a number of other films, including Splendor in the Grass and West Side Story, both released in 1961. Natalie Wood and Robert Wagner would divorce in 1962. After this, Natalie dated a number of celebrities, including Michael Caine and Warren Beatty, before marrying a man named Richard Gregson in 1969. That couple had a daughter in 1970 and would file for divorce in 1971. She then dated Jerry Brown, the future governor of California, but ultimately ended up with Robert Wagner again in early 1972. They would get married for a second time in July and have a daughter in 1974. This takes us to the night of November 28, 1981. 43-year-old Natalie Wood was on board a yacht named Splendor, which was moored off of Catalina Island, so in the Pacific Ocean, off the coast of California. There were three other people on board, Robert Wagner, the actor Christopher Walken, and the captain Dennis Davern. At some point that evening, Natalie entered the water. After some time had passed, Davern reported that she was missing. Her body was recovered the next day, just before 8 a.m. It was a mile away from the boat. A small inflatable dinghy was found beached nearby. No one on board seemed to have any explanation for what happened. Wagner said that when he went to bed, Natalie was still awake, and he doesn't know what happened. Her cause of death was drowning and hypothermia. Her blood alcohol level was 0.14%. She had a drug used to treat motion sickness in her system, as well as painkillers. Two witnesses reported they heard a woman scream for help that evening. Nothing much happened with this case until November of 2011, when Davern admitted that he had lied to the police during the initial investigation. Daver now says that Natalie was flirting with Christopher Walken, and Wagner became jealous and enraged at that behavior. Daver also claimed that Wagner prevented him from activating the searchlights or contacting the authorities to report Natalie was missing. Wagner initially denied that he was in any type of argument with Natalie that evening, but later he would admit it. In 2012, the death certificate was amended from accidental drowning to drowning and other undetermined factors. In 2013, a coroner's report indicated that there was a scratch on Natalie's neck, a scrape on her forehead, 
and she had three bruises, her left wrist, right knee, and right forearm. They speculated that she may have been attacked before she drowned. In 2018, Wagner was identified as a person of interest in this case. Christopher Walken is not a suspect. I've always liked Christopher Walken as an actor. Some people have been upset by the disturbing roles that he often takes. I find it interesting that in this case, he was the least creepy suspect left aboard that yacht. Now moving to the mental health and personality factors. So we see that Natalie Wood appeared to have substance use problems. She overdosed on sedatives three times in a four-year period and, of course, struggled with alcohol use. She received counseling for many years. She even turned down the part of Bonnie in the movie Bonnie and Clyde because she didn't want to be away from her therapist. The type of therapy she received is referred to as psychoanalytic, which is a popular modality, especially for people who are wealthy and particularly during that time period. It's not very popular anymore. We see it sometimes in California and New York, but it's not offered everywhere. The demand isn't really that high for it. I talked about this type of therapy before. It's typically done every day, which is what Natalie did for some time. It involves a lot of talking on the part of the client and a lot of listening on the part of a counselor, who in that modality is referred to as an analyst or psychoanalyst. Another famous actress, Marilyn Monroe, had psychoanalysis daily, as well as appearing to struggle with similar problems like substance use. There are several possibilities to explain why Natalie received this treatment. It may have been helping her. It could have been that no one else was listening to her. She maybe didn't feel comfortable talking to other people. Another possibility is that she was exploited by the therapist, which is likely what happened in the case of Marilyn Monroe but there's really no information about what transpired in the sessions with Natalie Wood. It is not known if she had any mental health diagnosis. Many suspect she was depressed, as she did attempt to end her life on several occasions. Let's take a look at her potential personality profile. I conceptualize personality using the five-factor model. I remember the big five traits through the acronym OCEAN, openness to experience, conscientiousness, extroversion, agreeableness, and eroticism. So with openness to experience, I think her level was probably fairly high. This is common in the acting business. She was intellectually curious, creative, adventurous. She appreciated art, enjoyed fantasy, and experienced emotions intensely. In addition to intellectual curiosity, Natalie was also exceptionally intelligent. Those two constructs are weakly positively correlated, so that's not really too surprising. As far as conscientiousness, she worked quite hard on the set. She took pride in being a capable actress, and she was generally responsible. With extroversion, her level was overall probably mid-range. She did not have a lot of positive emotions, but that may have been situational. She did not appear sensation-seeking, but she was relatively assertive, active, friendly, and outgoing. Her agreeableness was probably mid-range overall. She appeared trusting and empathic, However, she was also competitive. That comes with the territory of acting, so that might have been just her trying to advance her career. As far as neuroticism, she was probably on the higher side, as indicated by depression and anxiety. One of the themes of Natalie's life was how she was trying to be perfect, the perfect actress. She wanted the perfect career, the perfect relationship. She tended to focus on appearances, wanting to appear perfect. She always wore a bracelet on her left wrist because she had a scar there that she thought was unsightly. She would restrict how much she drank on set because she felt as though the alcohol made her face look puffy. This brings me to the discussion about her relationship with her mother, because this may be where the perfectionism came from. Natalie's mother, Maria, had dreams of being a ballerina or an actress, but she was not able to make that happen, so she devoted her energy into making Natalie a star, like living vicariously through Natalie. A fortune teller once told Maria that her second daughter was destined to be a star. So that could have been the origin, but it also could have been because Maria really wanted that for herself. I think that seems more likely. Maria was a significant influence on Natalie's development. She took her to the movies frequently and emphasized how magical movies were and how great it would be to be involved in that industry. Maria was overly ambitious regarding Natalie's performance and success, 
At one point when Natalie was having difficulty crying on cue for a scene, Maria took her aside and tore the wings off of a butterfly to make her cry. Other than the obvious sadistic component of this story, I wonder where Maria found the butterfly. Did she capture it in advance just in case she needed it? It really paints a picture of somebody who is ruthless. It's alleged that Maria arranged for a 15-year-old, Natalie Wood, to have sex with Frank Sinatra, who was 38 at that time. According to a biography published in 2001, sometime around 1954, Natalie was assaulted in a sexual manner during an audition with a powerful actor. This actor remains unnamed. Some people believe it was Kirk Douglas. I've never seen any evidence that really connects him strongly to that crime. Now, in addition to the actual crime, Natalie's mother prevented Natalie from reporting the crime to the police. Maria seemed to be satisfied when Natalie was interacting with men who could help her, even if that interaction was criminal. But for regular dating, Maria was much more restrictive. She allegedly hired private detectives to follow Natalie around on dates. Maria was certainly dominant in that relationship. We see this pattern where Maria had to win at any cost. She really didn't care if Natalie was harmed as long as it advanced her career. This brings up an interesting aspect of this type of destructive empathy. Maria could empathize with Natalie as far as Natalie's tremendous success in film. Again, the vicarious experience, but she could not empathize with Natalie's suffering. This type of selective empathy can be particularly deleterious. Even with this destructive relationship with her mother, Natalie adapted fairly well to the circumstances. She earned straight A's in her legally mandated lessons on set, she excelled in acting, and she loved being an actress. Now, the last question I'll attempt to answer here is what happened the night that Natalie Wood died? In this case, we see that Natalie was on the boat with, again, Wagner, Walken, and Davern. Let's look at the factors that point toward homicide and those that point toward accidental death. It's also possible this was a suicide, but that seems fairly unlikely given her fear of water, and this is really a pretty unusual way to carry out that type of behavior, like drowning isn't a popular way for people to do that. So I will focus on the other two alternatives. So looking at the evidence pointing toward homicide. Wagner and Natalie argued that night, and they were both intoxicated, so significant risk factors for homicide. The argument may have been about a relationship that Natalie had with Walken, or the perception that relationship existed. The presence of jealousy increases the risk here. Wagner had broken a bottle of wine during this argument, so we see that the argument spills over into physical destructiveness. It's not limited to just the verbal component. Wagner and Davern did not notify the authorities immediately. They searched for Natalie for several hours before Davern finally called for help. Now, this might not be terribly unusual, though, because they may have thought that she was in the dinghy and not actually submersed in the water. Both Wagner and Davern lied to the authorities initially. Wagner said that there was no argument, and Davern maintained that story. Natalie was afraid of water, as I mentioned before. She almost drowned filming the movie The Green Promise as a child. She became intensely afraid of water at this point. The last item, Natalie had several minor injuries on her body. I talked about those before. Now, looking at the evidence pointing toward accidental death, Natalie was intoxicated with alcohol and had other substances which could intensify that intoxication. None of the injuries on her body were severe, like none that would have rendered her unconscious or otherwise unable to communicate. No one on the vessel had any violent criminal history, of which I'm aware. Wagner did not do anything to destroy the boat, although it was eventually sold and later destroyed. If Wagner had committed homicide, one would think he would have tried to get rid of the boat much sooner, especially with the improvements in the forensic use of DNA. Now, the minor injuries seem to support homicide, but one could also argue that the damage to her head, neck, wrist, and arm could be consistent with falling and hitting the edge of the boat on the way down. Wagner did not have a strong motive to kill Natalie. There was this jealousy component with Walken, but Wagner's relationship with Natalie was important for his career. Wagner has always struggled to be a top-level actor, and he's never been able to do that. For whatever reason, 
he's never been able to land a defining role or deliver a notable performance. Whether it was intentional or unintentional, Natalie's death really hurt Wagner's career. If I were to weigh everything here, I would say that Natalie probably wanted to get off the boat or just get away from Wagner because of the argument, so she climbed into the dinghy. She was intoxicated, which contributed to her falling out of that inflatable boat at some point. Perhaps after falling, she never got back above the water to yell, and no one heard her moving around in the water because they were asleep. It also could have been that she was too far away from the yacht for them to hear her. Now, if Wagner did hear her struggling, he may not have responded because he was angry and didn't think it was serious. Natalie could have been too disoriented or impaired to climb back into the yacht or the dinghy, and the hypothermia could have set in, and that caused her to drown. No matter what happened, this was a tragic end to the career of a great actress, who at this point in her life was pivoting to new types of roles due to her age. She wasn't happy with that. She was struggling with the idea of being over 40, but her future in acting and other endeavors was bright. She undoubtedly would have had many additional memorable roles in motion pictures. So those are my thoughts on Natalie Wood. Please put any opinions and thoughts in the comment section. They always generate an interesting dialogue. As always, I hope you found my analysis of this topic to be interesting. Thanks for watching.